This is yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> Although I heard you say your last name earlier, and you it, you didn't say it the same way that I said it in my head. Uh, no, it's it's Michael. Okay. Okay. Well, if it's okay with you, I've been calling you the Michael in my head for the last two weeks. They don't miss all <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and get started if you know Okay, well, oh, that's great. I, I apologize. The technology just didn't quite work. And some of the things that we use literally are, are the things that make you process and things. So, congratulations. I understand just one brand new board member. Is that correct? Just trustee. Okay. <laughs> So as we, we go through this, and some of this is for you, but it's really for the whole group, the whole team. Uh, and this role that you play is so critical. And you picked an angry time to be serving on, on any board because you're trying to make the public happy and the public is not very happy. Right? So um, about, about anything, that's correct. And the good thing is, is you, you have insights into what drives your work, which helps your decision-making process much easier. You know you're here to serve all these kids who attend this the community college, and that's your role. So your why is always pretty obvious. How do we make sure the students we have are successful? Uh, you know, through that, and, and knowing that along the way, someone's going to be a little disappointed in, in what we've done. So the the ideas today, we're going to talk a little bit about the roles and governance of how how boards work, and it, it's it's probably Almost all of my work it has nothing to do with legal, the things you have to do. My work is almost always around the things you get to choose to do. So we can choose to work together. We can choose to stay focused. We can choose to have unity of purpose. We can choose to listen to one another. Those are the things that I do. So a lot of the work is based upon what high performing boards do. So there's no one's going no one can come in here and make you do the things that I talk. The law can make you do the other things. I don't get have that authority. So I'm going to give you some ideas to work through today, let you process, share your thoughts, get to know each other a, a little better in a, a scenario in which you literally don't have to make decisions. This is, this is a good time when boards can gather, learn together, and not have to, to raise your hand to make a decision. So tonight you get, or at least, at least for a little while today, get a chance to just learn together. We'll touch on some legal issues quickly. We'll spend some time on trust and communication. So uh, in an hour, I'm not sure exactly what Paul will get to, or, or in 50 minutes, 45 minutes, not sure what all will get if to. you go we'll past, go well, it's just so okay. You want me to go fast? Okay, no, I can go. Pass, pass, pass. Pass. Sorry. Okay. My first question for you to think about, why did you choose to run? Why did you choose to serve? So process that. I want you to think of two main reasons. You said, I, I, I'm willing to do this work. And it is work. And now turn turn to your person next to you. It's a shoulder partner work. You two. You are you sitting? I should have asked. Are you sitting by someone you like to visit with? And let me point out, your trustees. That maybe we should introduce <laughs> so you. So Brian, you want to just start, and that way he knows. Yep, yeah, uh, Brian Holtz. I'm uh, I'm the new guy here. So um, I work at a local community bank. Okay. Okay. I. Uh, I've lost count of the years, maybe 20 <laughs> on the board. So uh, I think I have a certain amount of knowledge of what goes on in uh, community college structures changed considerably over 20 years. And I have a business here in town. Okay. So do you remember why you chose to serve? Or um, in your case, if you continue to serve, right? Yeah, it's a continue on, uh, if you talk to my wife, uh, <laughs> she said I should not be serving, but um, I convinced her otherwise. Interesting, because the other day I had someone tell me they chose to serve because his wife made him. <laughs> well, I don't, you're, not, you're not the opposite. Hi, I'm Janet Fancher. I'm the vice president of student services. Oh, okay, okay. Adam, I work for the college as well. Oh, okay. Was, all right, very good. But I, you guys are gonna have to. You can still talk about why you serve, though. <laughs> John, 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 I'm John. John. I'm here to I have a 
business here in town. Okay. Uh, this will be about my uh, 17th year total. And uh, you wonder why I decided to do this? Mm -hmm. I, I believe in uh, giving time to the community, uh, especially the, sure. the Bourbon County. I, I'm a, I do business with a lot of people in this area. And not only that, I think it's, it, uh, I think more people should do what run for these boards and participate because uh, the community college is a tremendous asset to the county. And it's also, it helps uh, students further their education. And yeah, giving back to the community is, is, is primarily the number one reason I hear people get engaged. I want to serve kids and give back to the community. Mm -hmm. Very good. 17 and 20, so it's a close race. No, he's born. Robert was born here. Robert Nelson. Okay. Um, what was I supposed to say? <laughs> <laughs> I taught in a community college in Michigan for 28 years. Okay. Uh, retired and moved back to Fort Scott. Um, and <clears throat> uh, the house I had a home built here. Um, after the house was built, and I uh, didn't have anything to do for a bit, so I decided to take a class here at the college as a senior citizen. <laughs> <laughs> and I signed up for a music appreciation class. Anyway, during that class, I, uh, the instructor and I, uh, in fact, actually saw her today, uh, Ron Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, got in a conversation. I want to know what I did, and I told her. And she says it was about the time when there was an election. She said, "Oh, you should run for the board of trustees." And I said, "Oh, you got to be kidding!" <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so uh, I threw that out of my mind. Uh, then I came out for a meeting, and uh, I think Bernita Hill was running some a group that uh, were former faculty and uh, employees, and they met. Uh, periodically, and then I, I knew her, and I was talking to her, and she says, you know, you should run for the board of trustees. I was like, what's wrong with these folks? <laughs> uh, and then after that, I ran into Laura Meeks, and we were discussing it. She said, oh, you should. I, I shouldn't tell you, but you should run for the board of trustees. I thought, oh, my goodness, okay, I'm going to shut these folks up. And I went down and signed up uh, at the courthouse, got the right papers, turned it in, didn't think any more about it. Uh, I went to a men's prayer breakfast the day after the election. They said, congratulations. <laughs> and I said, for what? <laughs> said, you won. What <laughs> said, you got to be kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this has been a while back. So, yes. So I'm in my 23rd year. 23. Yes. You know, I'm not sure there's anything I'm going to talk about. Maybe you and I can just go meet. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, everybody else has all the experience. I've met you, Lee. Well, now I don't have as many years as Robert, but I'm Kirk Hart. Yeah. And I was a public educator and yeah. taught uh, for several years and principal the last few years uh, in different areas. And retired, moved back in 98, was in business. And I had people at kind of like Robert recruited you too. Yeah, yeah, he kept asking me, and I, I thought you know I had considered it anyhow, and I, because being in education, I, <clears throat> I love working with kids, and these are a little older than I'm accustomed to because I was at elementary, but you know it's something that I feel strongly about is uh, giving back to the community and. After all, this is where, I'm, where I met my future Mrs. Hart. So it's a good place. It's some place I believe in. And I'm glad to be part of it. Excellent. And I'm Dave Elliott. I'm also a retired elementary school administrator. I currently work at a, for a, a manufacturing firm here in town. And, and just about like Kirk, you know, the community uh, provided me. Uh, 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 living in a spot to be for 24 years here in Fort Scott, and this is a good way to get back. Uh, I was uh, also recruited a little bit, and you kind of felt like that, you know, maybe I can do something that's a value for them. Well, and, and let me interesting insights from all of you. So let me just validate some of the things you've said. Uh, 
obviously you want to give back. You're serving kids and you're, you're, you're demonstrating a value for education. Uh, and and that there's, a, there's a gap right now in that, in statewide, nationwide. So it's good that, that right here in Hill Scott, you are promoting that and advocating for that tremendously. So Brian, we'll we'll visit later. So we're just gonna, we're gonna just run with this. We got we got I, I almost said old first. We got the experienced firms here. I'm gonna say old, okay, because you know what old is. But this is really the, the whole process at one side. Uh, your job is to make sure that, that this community college is, is run well, not to run it. So you're a governance role. So your your job is to oversee that. And so you need to sit in that tower, that watchtower, you need to look down at this entire campus and, and then determine how well are we doing in the areas that we said were important. So the board's job is to decide what's important. And then you have your administrative team, your president in this case, to then execute your vision. So you want to serve kids, how are we doing that? And the role of any board is to, is to look at the data and then measure how is this working? And then we know exactly who, whose goal it is to, to accomplish that, and it's your vision that they do. So with many, sometimes we run down off that tower and get a little too close to it. You know, I was talking to somebody downtown and they told me, and therefore that becomes the data. That's not the data, that just someone's wants someone's opinion. So we need that. And you might you might create a question we want to ask. But it certainly doesn't determine the direction we want to go until we get some the big picture answers. So see the big picture, okay? Make sure that you're working on what you determine is important, okay? and then make sure you empower your president to execute that. So that's that's the whole premise of, of, of governance. So there's a lot of research that determines. How well you work together will determine how well we succeed meeting the needs of kids. And, and I, I mentioned earlier, there's some angry people there and they wanna bring their anger to your, to your tables. They wanna bring their anger to your meetings. They wanna bring their anger to make sure that they get their opinion heard and then, and then actually implemented. So, and here, here would be my insight on that. People have a right to say whatever they, within reason, whatever they want. They can share that opinion with you. And we can listen to that. We need to, we need to be respectful of all. But in the end, we need to make the best decision we possibly can for the students that we serve. Okay, and that's the power of, of a governance board. Now, because I didn't do what you told me doesn't mean I didn't listen to you. I did listen, okay? I gave you an opportunity to share your idea, but we made a different decision for this reason, this is our why. And probably we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. The most important thing you can do as leaders is explain to people why you make the decisions you make. And, and there, I'm, you can tell I'm, I'm probably almost, I'm saying I'm older than all of you in this room. There was a time when we grew up and people just said, because I said so. Mm -hmm. That was enough. It doesn't work anymore. You have to explain why we're making our, you and I may disagree, but if you understand why we're making the decisions, we can at least walk away respecting each other, okay? Didn't agree, but we respect each other. So that's what we're gonna talk a little bit about. So I want you to think about some of the roles that you play. What are some fundamentals that are required to be a good board member? So think of two or three ideas, and we're gonna go around and go around and let you talk about it. As a good board, as a member of a good board, what are some of the fundamentals that are required? You know, if you're, if you're gonna play music, you gotta to learn to read music. You're gonna to have to learn to, to, to run, do the fingering on, on the trumpet or, or the slide on the trombone. You have to learn to play basketball. You gotta learn how to catch a basketball, pass a basketball, shoot a basketball. Those are fundamentals. Being a good board member has some fundamentals as well. So I'm gonna let you think. I'll be quiet and let you think. Brian, I'll let you go last this time, so you can hear from, from the, all of They're going to take all the good answers. Well, <laughs> you, you, you know, the, the hand is going to go last, you get some ditto. <laughs> yeah. So let's start right here. What, what's a couple of fundamentals about being a good board member? Everyone needs to know. Uh, I would say one of them would be an understanding that it is not your job to run the organization, but the understanding that your job is to provide governance over the people who run the organization. 
Excellent. I, I wasted that flashlight, didn't I? You already did. <laughs> Excellent. I'd say be a good listener. Good listener. Excellent. Thank you. Bob, what did you say? I'm not, I shouldn't call you. That's fine. Sir, I, 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 I no, knew you for 10 right. years. You, you've only been on the board 23. So. Yeah, that's quite all right. Yeah. Um, Basically, to keep uh, in mind that students, uh, that you're here to serve students uh, to the best of your uh, capacity, and that's not just one group of students, but the entire school body. The entire student body, right. not just your in level of area of interest, right. great insight. Thank you, because there are certain things that we may be more passionate about than others, but we have to make sure that what some, what everything you offer here is someone's passionate about. When I walked in here, and let's saw the ag room. Somebody's passionate about agriculture here. I don't know who, but somebody is. Look at the, look at the recognition and the awards that this in this building. Someone has taken a passion in that. So that's important. I've got to say what Kirk said. Listen, listen. That's that's probably the most important thing that I can think of. Is somebody walks in my door and says, "Do you have time to listen about something or a concern I have about the college?" I take time. Yeah. Listen and learn. Mm -hmm. Very good. This slide all the way around, sir. Well, it's just like John says, uh, we meet the community every day mm -hmm. and, and we have people coming in and, and you are, they're talking to you. So what do you do this? What do you do that? What do you do that? And I think it's our job again to listen, but to direct them to the correct people on campus to, to solve that issue. And it's not for us to say, by golly, we're going to go down there and fix that right now. We can't micromanage that, that product. I don't think we do that. I think we're pretty good about not doing that. Yeah, you're excellent. Yeah, one, one of the worst things you could promise somebody is you'll take care of it. Yeah. Is you don't get to take care of it. I have one, one vote, one voice amongst our group. Uh, I don't get to make those decisions. We need to make those decisions as Okay, you gotta go ahead and you can say there what we want. No, that's okay. Uh, not that I disagree with any of that. Uh, that's all good. But I would also say that we need to be involved um, within the institution as we can, you know, know what's going on in the college, but then also be involved as, in the community because I feel like we're part of what we do is help to represent the community college uh, among the community members. Now you advocate for, for education. Correct. Yeah. And you do that in the role that you play. Um, and so when you're in the community and you're getting insights, uh, you're, you're going to know some truths that they don't know. You're going to know some things that are going on that they don't know. Uh, and it's easy sometimes to tell people, okay, thanks. I, I, any barbers in here? No one said you were a barber. <laughs> I, I use the barber as a perfect example. If you are, I apologize. Barber is a perfect example. Someone comes and sits in the barber's chair. And they're cutting their hair. I'm saying, I'm just, <laughs> you know, I'm cutting their hair. And that guy started griping about this, that this is the worst place I've ever seen. I can't believe this community is terrible. I don't know why we're here. And the barber's young, uh, cutting their hair, agrees with everything they said, takes his money, and they walk out. And the next second, this is the best community I've ever been in. I've never been in a place that's as friendly. Uh huh, uh huh, yeah. You, you, you don't get to just agree with everything they say, you may have to advocate. You know, you know, I, I've heard that, but here's the real story, Paul Harvey. Here's the rest of the story, okay? Because you know the rest of the story. How do you share that? So, hey, Brian, don't you? You're <laughs> picking on me there. Man. So here's some here's some other skills that you can keep in mind, uh, and you identify most of them. Keep learning and achievement is, is your primary focus. So when you're having your discussions, how's this going to impact us? What's this going to do to our graduation or re our recruitment rate? What's this going to do to our retention rate, right? Because some kids come in for a semester and we lose them. How are we going to make sure we keep them? What are the things we're going to do to make sure they want to be in our system? Value, support, and advocate for public education. Um, you play such a critical role in that. Respect differences. This goes back to what Brian was talking about a little bit. Respect the difference in perspective and styles of, of each other, the staff, the community, the parents. We all have a different perspective. We all see things through a different lens. We have our own history that we bring to the, to the to conversation. But remember, because it's different doesn't mean it's necessarily wrong. It's just different. Okay? 
Understand that manners and behaviors make a difference. How we treat each other around the table is really important. Um, I don't know, from what I've listened to you guys, I don't know that there probably would ever be a, 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 an argument in word, but I don't know that, all right? The board sometimes can argue with each other, okay? When they argue with each other and they're not talking about the, the issue, they're talking about you, then it gets the conflicts arise. Keep your confidential information confidential. There are some things you know that, that no one else knows and should know. That's part of your rule. Uh, commit your time and energy. Two of you have already said you do that constantly. Understand your roles and responsibilities. You just alluded to that right quickly. Understand that authority rests with the whole board. You've talked about that. It's a decision that we make. Uh, we don't always make, you may not even always vote unanimously, but the majority of the board wins today. And of course, part of your job is to make sure that if you didn't agree with that vote, I still support the board. This is what the board thinks is important. I still support that. And then work hard to build an effective governance team. Be a team. And when I say that, I don't mean that term loosely. I mean it critically. Uh, great teams work well together. They put the team above themselves. Okay. You should share your opinions. You should share your thoughts. But the team, we're, we're, what we all think is more important than what I think. And when boards talk in the terms of we instead of the term I, it's a big difference. Okay, what are we going to do? How can we, what do we think? Instead of I think, there's a big difference there. So those are some fundamentals to remember. You alluded to a, a lot of them pretty quickly as we started. Here's how the governance clock works. And this one is specific, specifically for Brian. It sounds like the rest of you already understand that. You set the expectations for the, for the campus. This is how we're going to, these are the things that we want to focus on. And the president leads and manages. Uh, and, and they do both, by the way. Part of, the, part of their job is to manage. Some of it's just management work. And part of it is to lead. And at the very top, the board has authority and the president has authority at the bottom. So the first thing you want to do is establish a vision. And that vision becomes the vision of, the, of, the, of the, the college. The mission is what we do every day and then the goals we want to be working on. So if I were to ask you what your goals were, could you all tell me what goals you're working on? I know your admin team can, but can the board? That's a question. I'm not, I'm not asking, I'm saying if I asked you. You need to be focused on what are our goals look like? What are we trying to accomplish? Once we do that, then we adopt policies to make that happen. And policies are the decisions you make. Some of them are written in, in your policy manuals. Some of them are written every time you have a meeting and you have a vote in your minutes. We're making a decision to approve this. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna have to cut budget here. We're gonna have to add budget here. We're gonna add a program. We're gonna delete a program. All those things are policy decisions you make as a board to implement the, the goals of the, of the, of the college. Now it crosses below this line, and that's where you let the president put the plans together. You said, this is what we wanna see. Here's the policies and the resources to make that happen. Put your plan together. She'll develop the plan, she'll implement it, and then they'll monitor and report right back to you. Okay, these are the things that you said you wanted to see. These are the things we're working on. Here's the data, here's the cost so that you have, you're, you're making informed decisions. And then ultimately, you evaluate that. Did it work? How well did that program go? So I'm gonna pause for just a second and let you, is this what we're doing? Is this how we operate currently? I would say so. Thanks. Uh, I can't, I, I don't know, the first thing that you mentioned uh, after the 12, um, but uh, I think Alicia and the the you know executive team or whatever you want to call that, uh, I really think they do their job well. Good. And and I've always been under the assumption that we don't run this school; okay. um, they do. Um, and I, I remember I had a, a a comment one time that when I became chairman of the board or president of the board, whatever, and they started calling me king. <laughs> and I took them aside and said, I am not the king. We have the president, the board 
hires the president, that's who runs this school. So I, I think I think the board does it pretty well understands that how, how this works. Good. Um, might vary a little, you know, or, or you know, shift a little bit one way or the other. I think they're really adept at doing what we're doing. Good. Well, that that's an indication that your your culture is correct. That, I mean, the board culture is correct. If we're empowering our president to accomplish what we think is important as a board, that's the way it should look. So, a couple other thoughts. The board always decides what we do. You always, you always decide what we do. Okay, the president's job is always to make recommendations to you. Okay, here's here, and, and then, and part of her job in this case is to tell you why we should do this. Okay, here's why we should do this. Sometimes it's going to be a federal mandate, right? You get a few federal mandates across your plate, I imagine. Okay, but here's why we should do this. Here's how it can meet the needs of more kids. Here's how we can be more efficient or more effective. Uh, here's a program we can expand. Here, here's some enrollment issues we need, need to look at. All those things are, are factors that she would bring to you with, with an explanation of here's why I think we need to do this. Your job as a board is always to ask, okay, why? Okay, and that's that constant communication. And that's why that line is perforated in the middle. You have to always communicate the why. And we need to communicate that to each other at the table. We need to communicate to that to the president and the president needs back to the board. And then obviously we need the community needs to be engaged in that as well. So really that's the whole governance clock in one simple moment. Uh, it's very hard to live. The reason I would tell you that sometimes that line drops a little further down and the board gets involved in the day to day. <laughs> with, with school boards where I spend most of my time, school boards, sometimes school board members think they are the, the superintendent. Okay. Okay. That happens. Sometimes superintendents don't utilize the school board. They just make the decisions. So that's why it's right in the middle, and that's why that communication has to be constant. Questions on this. John says we're kind of living it right now. Brian, you're living this. Uh, you want to put you on the spot here. Questions for, from you. Uh, well, I mean, part of the, uh, I think part of the challenge of joining in the middle of the school year is I, I'm, I'm anxious to learn more about the vision and, you know, how our policies and everything are being enacted. Um, I've kind of observed from afar, but, you know, um, getting more involved, um, I think it's a good opportunity for me to see what all those things are and then uh, and ask why and ask yeah. and ask why and then uh, how I can pitch in going forward. And, and what's interesting, every time you have a new member come on to a board, it changes the dynamics of it. Uh, and so some some new board members come in and they listen and they ask why. And, 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 and experienced board members say, because I said so. Now think about that. Does that work? That's not gonna give you much information, is it? No. So the, the, the experienced board members have to embrace your new board member and, and, and listen and learn. Here's why we're doing this. Okay, well, and then why did we make that decision? Here's why we made that decision. And then you, then you can own the mission, vision and goals as well. But with, with new board members, it's, First thing you got to do is make sure we all own those goals. And if you don't all own them, then I got five wanting to do this and I got three wanting to do that, and no one very happy. And, and it's, it shows itself at, at the board table. Okay. Any other experienced board members want to share an insight? I just want to say also not just why, but how. Um, because sometimes, you know, Alicia or makes a recommendation of doing something or not doing something. Well, how is this going to affect yeah. the school or the, or the, the, uh, the expenses or the costs or things like that? So sometimes how is an important word for me. Yeah. And, and, and you framed it perfect because, because the, the president's job or the superintendent's job in a school district president at a, at a, at a university <coughs> or, or college is to decide how to do it, but communicate constantly. And then your question is, 
well, how can we do this? It's not your job to decide how, your job to decide what, but you need to talk about why you chose to do it this way. And, and that's the clarification. I hope that's great insight. Very good. Okay, well, here's the simple explanations. Uh, the board decides what we're going to do. The president decides how. John was just one slide ahead of me. <laughs> you request information, okay, because you need to make decisions with information. And the president's job is provided for you so that you can make those good decisions. Uh, and and the, the idea that the levels of trust that are, are, are so important for this relationship are critical, but just saying trust me is not enough. Okay. Is to, but just trust me. No, I, I need to see the information to make a good decision. You deliberate and decide, and you do that by having your conversations and running through your, your procedures of your board meeting. Uh, the president's job is always to provide options and recommendations. Here's some things we could do. Uh, here's what I think we should do, depending on what the situation is. Uh, you adopt the policies. The, the president implements those policies. By the way, guess where most of the conflicts arise in any leadership role? Governance puts a policy in, president, president implements it, and what happens? And people push back. Okay? And we lived that this last two years. So that's been ahead of uh, You have contracts for professionals. Uh, they recommend the professionals. And then you approve the evaluation criteria for how we're going to determine if we're getting better. And then you supervise and evaluate. And who does the board evaluate? We evaluate the president. The president evaluates everyone else. Simple model. Here's the key. We've talked a little bit about it already. Okay. You always have to be able to explain why you're making the decision you're making. Okay. And that why is a two way street. It's constant to everyone else. Okay. Everyone needs to know why we're doing it. A couple other things to remember. And okay on time. Good okay on time. Right. Effective, powerful governance occurs when the board is operating in a unified, cohesive manner with a unity of purpose driven by the moral imperative. Okay. What would be the unity of purpose that you would consider is driving you? Is it the same reason you chose to serve? What's the moral imperative? What's driving public education and the service of public education for you? Here's five things to remember about good governance. One, you have to make a commitment. You have to make the commitment that this is what we want to make sure this is well run. Number two, you have to have that moral imperative. It drives your work. And the strategic direction of the college. That's why that has got to be something that is, it, it should, your, your board meeting should evolve around that every time you gather together. Okay, here, here's our agenda is aligned to our strategic planning, vision, mission goals. Have a governance mindset. Okay, make sure the president understands her role with you and make sure you understand your role of meeting. Effective boards have coherence in their unity of purpose. This goes back to Brian's question. I, I, I want to get more connected to those goals. I want to get more connected to understand what we're doing. And you do that by asking questions. And then lead from the middle, okay? Lead as you work together, as we find that common ground, as the board and the president working together to accomplish those goals. Coherence is a show. Oh, I'm sorry, John. Oh, <clears throat> this number one, making a commitment to good governance. What I wanted to see up there was take the time. Yes. Or make the time. And, and uh, thinking about that, when I saw the number one, that's kind of falls under that. But, okay. Excellent. Coherence is a shared depth of understanding about the nature of the work. Okay. And I, I would tell you the work that you're doing isn't, isn't complicated. It, it's beyond complicated. Okay. It is. Okay. And so you're trying to make a whole lot of people be successful in a very challenging time, very challenging time. When you, the next step above simple and complicated is con called complexity. Okay, and so we have a lot of things that you do have a lot of complexity or complexity by nature. Okay, you have, kid, you have, you have kids from, from all over, 
the can all over Kansas, probably all over the region, I'm guessing, right? Yes. Who, who have different ambitions, different goals. And it's complex, it, there's complexity in trying to find a way to serve them all. Okay. And that means in your course offerings, that means in the opportunity, they go, your opportunity to learn for your for your students. So understanding that the work you're doing isn't as easy as just offering a class. Let's just add a class. It'll make it easy. Okay. It goes beyond that. You also have to have collaborative work. It's the key driving force. The goal of collaboration is the way we do things. So I'm going to let you pause for a minute, and I'll probably start with 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 the king. Can I say that? <laughs> with with the president. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not the king. I want to start with the president. I want to, I want you to, to or this is a much for Brian and to, and to reinforce what you do. How do we do things here? So I'll be quiet. And let you think. See if you can put it into words. John, I'll start with you. How do we do things here? <clears throat> when we, oh, this is the way I feel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When we have a, a question or a, a something we have to vote on, um, we, I feel the board draws on the abilities of all the members and the specific thing that some members can offer that other members don't understand, or, or I, I won't say don't understand it. That's not, not a good choice of words, but aren't, uh, okay. Um, maybe, and now I'm gonna use a Kirk an educator, um, and maybe he's been in business before, I don't, I don't know, but, and then Jim, who has been in business for many years. Uh, Robert was an educator. I've been in business for many years. Brian's been in business, you know, for many years. So you, you, you use those things that those board members have. And well, how do you see, what do you see in this question? Or how do you, what's your answer? Or what's your proposition as to how this needs to be handled? Because, you know, we'll get answers from different board members and you go, well, yeah, hey, I, I hadn't thought of that because I've never been a teacher before or I've never been in certain situations. So you're drawing on the experience and the wisdom of go. the board. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, and that's, what, that's why we elect board and that's why we hope to bring diverse opinions to the table to make the best decisions possible. Very good. Oh. Mm. Um, I would say that the way we do things for, my, for myself, I'm not a numbers person, so don't rely on me with a bunch of numbers. Um, if, but if I, I can tell the difference between something that's operating in black and then when it turns red, uh, <laughs> that's something bad. Um, but beyond that, uh, I'm, I'm good. And uh, I think we recognize that uh, uh, each, each of us as a board member uh, bring our own perspective as to what the way things should be and the way we look at it and uh, how we apply it and where it finds. So for me, I always keep in mind is how does this affect the students? Uh, Great place to start. Yes. Well, I appreciate what John said there because that's pretty much how I feel. Okay. You know, we've got diversity of people here and everybody has strengths. I know I've got weaknesses and I listen to what others say because I might not have thought of that, but I've been thinking of it in a different route, which is through the eyes of an educator, which as a businessman, John might think of it in a different manner. And, and it might be a better way. Exactly. Well, yeah, exactly. I can't I can imagine, but <laughs> He's game. Yes, <laughs> well, I have to remember that. You said never said that at all. <laughs> I, I probably will regret yeah, saying that. Yeah. Yeah. I can almost guarantee you. Yeah. Yeah. But the only thing I would add to what has already been said, and, and I agree with what, what everybody has said, but what I would add to it is 
I think we do a good job of trusting that team right there to, to bring us the information we need to do what's right, even when we're not ready. Good. Yeah, and that's kind of their role, right? They're, they're the ones with the closest to, to, to the students in that sense. And even though they're probably not teaching classes, they're around all the things that impact students. And their job is to bring that information in. Very good. I'm going to make you go last. <laughs> well, just like Robert says, he says, I'm not a numbers guy. I am a numbers More guy. More than numbers guy. So when they come with uh, a program and says, okay, we need to start uh, a welding program. Okay. How are we going to pay for that? How many students are we going to have? You know, the number size. Yeah. Are we going to, you know, we do have some programs on campus that really don't pay for themselves. But if we didn't have those, then we would be negatory in some programs that were positive. Would that be correct? Yes. So, how does that play in the whole program of things? If we start a welding program, construction trades may double. You know, or something like that. Yeah, implications, very good. Yes. Yeah, and and or the radiography program. <laughs> <laughs> what you what you that's it must be an inside joke. What yeah. you guys are <laughs> is that we turn to each other's areas of expertise when we find a situation we're discussing. You also said I may come in with what I think is a good idea. But when we listen to each other, that may be a better idea. And that's how great boards work. Now, you got to go last. Uh, ditto. ditto. <laughs> and and, and if, if you really can fall into that, that mindset, the, the, the board's going to function at the highest level. Fantastic. OK. All right, here's some distractions and challenges. Sometimes you're going to challenge your individual core values when you think about the board, what we're trying to do. That can happen. I really believe this is important. I come from education and you come from the, the business side and the business views it a little bit differently. That's gonna challenge us. How do we work through that challenge? Okay, micromanagement versus accountability. Okay, you, you have an overall picture of the accountability role, but you don't wanna micromanage. And you when you ask questions, you literally ask questions. Perfect, we're gonna start another program. And well, because there's a need for a welding program, but it may, I don't know how much, how much of it, what the turnaround challenges will be, but what are the other implications? A perfect example. So you do that by asking, asking the right questions and then working through that process. Remember, you represent your constituency, but you literally, this is, it's, it's a, it's a democratic republic, okay? Meaning they trusted you, they put you in this role to make the best decisions they could. Uh, we don't need to get together and have a town hall meeting before every board meeting to decide what you're going to do. They put you in this role to trust you to make the best decisions. For new board members, that's, that's one of those hard ones because my whole neighborhood or my downtown, every day I see, and they come in and tell me we need to do X, Y, or Z, and that's who elected me, so therefore, I need, well, you know, therefore you need to share that thought at the table. But that doesn't mean that that's going to be the direction we go because that direction may be best for that small group that came in and told you what they think you should do and in the big picture it's not so that, that's one of those that's one of the challenges because you do represent but they trusted you to make the best decisions you could to serve your kids so. on, on that point you know uh, people out there in the community we hear these things uh, what I call on the street that our administration does not hear. I think it's our responsibility to bring what's on the street. Uh, let's say you start a program and and uh, on the street says, well, you know, how come they didn't take this person to put us the head of this? You know, you know, it's for us to say, well, you know, there's certain decisions made, but I think the administration needs to know that. To, because we're a real community. Sure. We're, we're still a small community. We, we need to 
and we're part of the community, so we want to communicate, I guess. Yeah, way. no, that, that's a great insight. And everyone knows or thinks they know, right? They don't always yes. know, but they think they know. Mm -hmm. And they're going to share that with you. Mm -hmm. And what you always need to do as a board member is it's a mountain out of a molehill syndrome. Yeah. Okay, how do I how do I catch this you while still a molehill until before it becomes a mountain? Okay, and you do that by communicating. Uh, I'm hearing a little rumbling out there. There's been some questions about there in, in the public about, okay, it may not mean we have to make any decisions, but we need to be aware, okay, particularly if it's personnel, because that's a whole other, another set of baggage you don't want to have to drag with you, because it, it, everyone knows what they know, but they don't know everything that they think they know. Okay, uh, I'm almost done. I think you guys probably get ready have a single mind agenda for, or one program or one purpose. If, if, if your passion lies in any given area and that's the only thing that you focus on, it's going to be a real distraction to the board. And that happens on occasion. Uh, for you guys, I don't, I don't know what that might even be. Uh, but if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're KU, it might be basketball, right? Okay, and I, I don't know what their board of trustees talks about basketball or not, but I know they better, right? Because <laughs> that's what they fill out on the field out there. So how do you get past the idea? This is the one thing that's really important, important to me, and make 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 sure that I'm doing what's important to everyone. And that's 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 our charge. Um, it can be a distraction. Here's an interesting one, and I don't think this is going to be something that this group will ever do. It's my my way or the board's way. Is, is is compromising selling out okay and i have an answer but oftentimes we view things from i want to do this my way or the highway my way is right your way is wrong okay and finding a compromise is not selling out that's that's what we're that's why we're here what is the compromise and of course the key to a compromise you can compromise on everything but your principles, correct? I don't mean those principles. I mean your <laughs> principles. Okay. But the, the LA, don't, don't compromise on these principles. Compromise the, the LA is not that not the AL. So we've got to do what's right for our kids, but we've got to find a compromise to make that happen. Okay. John, you've got to try to have thought. Compromise is hard, by the way. Uh, well, it's is listen to what Jim had to say. We just went through a thing where we discontinued a program. And you talk about uh, this room was full of people who were uh, not wanting us to discontinue this program. So that's, uh, that's just another way of seeing that. Um, and I think we weathered it fairly well, although it's, it's still, there's still a lot of rumblings about it. But um, it, it my thought about it is uh, give it time and given all the reasons that we discontinued this program uh, 99 people out of 100 who came into my business and expressed an opinion they said when i heard that i understood it made sense yes yeah and and that that that's the hardest thing to do is communicate Okay, people don't want to know, they don't care until they want to know. And then they wanted to know yesterday. Yeah. Okay. You know, we we, we said that it's it's it, it's been it's been on, I don't know what is it. You guys probably use Facebook and you use Twitter and you you have your website and you have you send out you have the local newsman. You do all these things to communicate, but no one saw it until they did. And then what the heck? How come you didn't tell me about this? Yeah. When did this happen? Yeah. How come you didn't tell me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to share some input on that thought. Yeah, very good. Okay, and then the, of course the last one is the rubber stamp conundrum, in which uh, and this this can haunt is when we we don't we don't have those great rich discussions around the table. We just turn to the president and say, "Well, what should we do?" Okay. Well, pretty soon, what what's everybody say? You're just doing what you're just rubber stamping what the president wants. So it's, it's a two-way street there. Now, the, the president may have the best ideas, but we got to talk about it. Okay, we got to make sure that we've vetted those ideas. 
that otherwise we're setting her up for failure uh, and we're setting ourselves up for failure if we don't have those discussions. Okay, <clears throat> I think I've used up my time. A lot of experts here. Uh, if I if, if I travel around, could I maybe can you come and you know, some of the other boards I work with? Most of the boards I work with are angry. I didn't see any anger here. Today. <laughs> I Do I need to push some buttons? <laughs> I can push some buttons. I'm number five there. Would you be interested in like going to Washington, D.C. to talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I, I constantly use that as an example. Oh, okay, we can't govern our schools, our colleges, <laughs> the way they govern in Washington. And, and, and what's frustrating is you and I disagree. And as soon as we disagree, I walk out and I grab the mic. And I'm talking about how stupid you are and how bad you are and how evil you are. And oh, about 20 feet away, there's another mic where someone put one in me, how stupid I am, how evil I am. So how do you work through that? That can't be the environment that we create for, for Kansas schools. We just can't do that. And we have two, our work is too important. Theirs is too, but I'm not sure if we're ever gonna get there. So, well, you know, you asked us about why we join the board. You know, I think back to the politicians which this is, I don't look at this as a politics, maybe someday, do. but if I had a person ask me, you know, what, what I was going to do about such and such, so I'm not going to do a thing. You know, I'm one person of, of a group of six, yeah. and I said, you know, I can bring my opinion to the board, but the board decides. Yeah. And when a, poli or a politician Says I'm. These are the things I'm going to do. Well, no, you're not. No. You can't do that. You're an individual. Yeah. But I, I, I won't. I, you're not going to get me going to the policy. <laughs> <laughs> that was an example. Stop it. That was an example. Thanks for letting me spend an evening with you. Uh, uh, nice to meet you. Yes. Yeah. So you you put on these for KS uh, KSB KSB. Yeah. So. All schools and community colleges, uh, state colleges, or well, we there, there's I'm part of a team that does this. So we do a lot of these. Okay. We do a lot of them via Zoom uh, early. Uh, and we had, when the new the election happened in November, and so we did a lot of them in end of November, all December, January, February. We do a lot of them face to face like this. Uh, and, and, and sometimes I work with boards that have three or four new board members. So you guys have one. So there's a lot of continuity here. It's how do we bring one on board? And, and, but sometimes it's we're already, we're already divided before we've ever sat down. Yeah. So it depends. But yeah, we, we do. For, I, I, we work with a lot of them. We don't work with every week. It's, it's whoever calls us and says, hey, could you come spend some time talking about it? Well, I know there's some interesting things out there on the secondary level. Of schools where uh, politicians here again are trying to dictate a curriculum for a year out. That's almost impossible uh, when you talk to an actual teacher and instructor because things change. Uh, From day to day. Yeah, day yeah. to day. And I'm not sure exactly where that bill will go. There's a lot of discussion right now about that. Yeah, so. well, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. But, you know, they, yeah. want to, they want to see your program or your what you're going to teach for the entire school year in advance, and they're not even thinking about how much time that's going to take that instructor to come up with something like that. The state standards are already on the website. Yeah, yes. how, it's, it's a how you teach it is an individual responsibility. I, I, sorry to say this, but it's getting to the political thing. They're trying to micromanage what the school system, well, how they know. teach right. their children. Uh, so I, I don't basically have an opinion. You know, why uh, dictate maybe some of these things? And that, that's at a different level that we're on. So sure, yeah. yeah. I, 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 good. I was just going to say because I don't. I know I haven't explained this before. We are members of the Kansas Association of School Boards, and the reason that we are is number one, they provide us with a lot of <clears throat> legal assistance when it comes to things like that. Actually, community colleges were under the Kansas Board of Education until 2001. And then the community colleges and the technical colleges moved to the Kansas Board of Regents. So it's kind of confusing because we get this question a lot. 
you guys, you are our governing board. The Kansas Board of Regents is our coordinating board. So that can be kind of confusing. Now they do govern the six state institutions, but they coordinate us. And so it all gets kind of confusing, but we rely heavily on KASB and have for many years, uh, mostly for their legal <coughs> advice, because when it comes to things in education, they certainly are the experts and that we greatly appreciate. That. I, I appreciate you greatly coming here. I just wanted to tell you too that this is an opportunity not just for board, but for me, and I'm sure for uh, Janet and Adam too. There's certainly opportunities for me to improve in terms of what information I get you. We're going to, you know, do some strategic planning, do a board retreat next month. But it's interesting for me because, you know, I can also see weaknesses that I have in terms of what. You know, these are things that I definitely need to do to work a little harder on those kinds of things. And so uh, I would say just to better them up because I'm not asking for a raise this year, but I really do believe. We may. <laughs> I said 100% of zero is still zero. So. <laughs> the, uh, the number I know. <laughs> fortunate and uh, to be able to work with this board and to work with the staff that I get to work with because I think that they represent the community very well and uh, you know and all of them have you know that at heart and that is to do something good for the community and for our students and so I think that's where we don't have anybody with an agenda you know we haven't had you know somebody come in here being like well we want to do this or that and so I, I can tell you that I greatly Appreciated. And I would stack this board up against any of the boards in the state and say that we are definitely the champions, the purple oh. ribbon winners. So, right and I'm not asking, but I'm going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> That's high praise. And, and, I, and I work with some great boards. I'm sure. Again, everything I do is, is it your choices. I don't do the legal side. Uh, we can choose to work together to serve kids or we can pick and fight. Um, but on occasion, I have some, they pick, they pick sides, get trench warfare, and, and just argue with each other. Uh, in the end, though, the, you, know, who, you know who loses? The kids that lose in the house. It's interesting. So uh, nice, to, nice to visit with you. Thank Keep you. Keep the good work and continue to, to inboard or onboard your new board member, and you'll be wonderful. We have had people come on the board with an agenda, yeah. and well, I think we've educated them quite well. Yeah, and that's the key. They have one vote. They have one one vote. Yeah. They get a vote. They have one vote. Yeah. Well, thank you. And I want to thank you for coming. Thank, 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 thank you so much. And it. you can definitely eat. Yeah. Maybe I say hello back. I will. I will tell him. He, he, he texted me on the way down. He wanted to call. I said I was coming here. And he to so, <laughs> Randy is the. State uh, Education Commissioner, and he and I are actually Okay. He has my cell phone. What's wrong with Paul? I really get something. Yeah. Let's get something. I really appreciate it. Well, listen, I, we started to walk after oh, my spine oh, surgery oh, and after it fell. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 finally get to the point where I can just walk. You know, that first week or two just doesn't make me feel it.
Mm. Julie, would you call the roll, please? Sure. John Barlsmeyer. Here. Dave Elliott. Here. Jim Fewens. Here. Kirk Hart. Here. Brian Holt. Here. Robert Nelson. Here. And stand a piece of the pledge of I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, I'd like to have uh, make a few comments. We had a really nice uh, presentation for the board meeting. It was open to the public from with a representative from KASB. And uh, it was all about what the board's, uh, what the board does, what the board should be doing, how we work, how we interact, interact with the, uh, the college. And I think everybody enjoyed it. I know we have a, a new board member and um, it, we had, it was a good lively discussion. So I, I appreciate it. Um, uh, consent agenda, approval of the agenda. Approval of minutes of the regular board meeting back to January 24th, 2022. Approval of uh, treasurer's report, bills and claims. Approval of personnel actions. Um, and hang on just a minute. <clears throat> Attached to the minutes of the regular board meeting conducted on January 24th, 2022. Approval of the treasurer's report, bills and claims. Approval of personnel actions. Additions, Melissa, Shayla, the IDRC project specialist, effective February 1st, 2022. Madison Dellinger, assistant volleyball coach, effective February 18th, 2022. Separations, Bethane Elliott, admissions representative, graphic design specialist, effective February 15th, 2022. Alia Higginbotham, Head volleyball coach, effective February February eighteenth, twenty twenty two, and Brian Lancaster, director of admissions, effective February twenty eighth, twenty twenty two. It is recommended that the consent agenda items be approved as presented. Is there any discussion? Just have a couple of questions on the the head volleyball coach. How long was she here? Two years. Two years. Yeah. And Brian Lancaster, did he go somewhere? I, I'm not sure. He's the deli. Mm -hmm. He's going into business. He's going into business. I'm not okay. sure if I'm supposed to say that. Yeah. <laughs> we're, yeah. We're, we we wish that we could have kept him, but yeah, I know that he was. They were. They were trying to keep that in the family, mm -hmm. so I knew there's some close relationship there, and that's why. Yeah, you know, I met the young man. You know, just a month or two ago. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. He did a great job. So, so I'm disappointed. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. So move. Okay. Second. Moved and seconded. Julie, would you call for the vote, please? Elliot? Yes. Hewins? Yes. Hart? Yes. Holt? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Cardinal Snyder? Yes. Hang on just. <clears throat> Approval of beverage sales and vending provider on campus. Bids were received through Fort Scott Community K, Fort Scott Community College administration on a new contract for beverage and vending agreement on campus. Great Western Dining also assisted with the gathering information to provide the companies looking to bid. The current contract with Pepsi Cola Bottling Company of Pittsburgh expired in January of this year. The following pages are a detailed breakdown of the offers received from Pepsi and Coke, respectively. The expired contract was a 12 year contract. Fort Scott Community College is, is seek, Fort Scott Community College is seeking a contract with a shorter duration moving forward. It is recommended that the board approve the contract with Heartland Coca-Cola effective immediately. Discussion. Okay, it says, are we doing a 12 oh, year again? No, no. 
No, the, the both of these contracts are for five years. We did five get years. Them. Uh, the previous one was a 12 year contract, which uh, it makes it incredibly difficult. Uh, we waited for a while to be able to renegotiate, to be able to uh, get the most out of our sponsorship. Uh, an example of what they what this contract is, is they serve their product in the cafeteria uh, at our uh, games and whatnot. We'll use Coke product uh, and all the vending machines on and around campus will be uh, will be Coke as well. And so we had this uh, the previous contract since uh, 2010, I believe it was uh, early 2010, and uh, it expired January of this last year and so it gave us the opportunity to open up for bid. I, I know we've used some of these contracts before for uh, like scoreboards in the mm. basketball arena yeah. Yeah. things like that. Yes. So, so what what are we talking about here as far as money? Uh, there's actually the there's actually a, a thing on there that says the investment per year. Uh, so when we signed with Pepsi uh, 12 years ago, I believe we got a $13,000 sign in bonus. Uh, type thing and they gave us a lump sum with that uh, this one will pay us every year uh, instead of just a, a lump sum and so it, uh, the process in there is a, a five thousand dollar commitment to the school uh, over every year and then we also get a dollar off of the gallon of stuff that they use and so granted on how much that that is uh, it will vary semester by semester uh, how much kids drink pop and this goes into what fund? Uh, it goes into uh, the athletic endowment account uh, okay. to be able to use it. And you you feel that Coke is the better of the two? Uh, did Pepsi want another long term contract? Or no, they gave us. I asked for a five year contract, uh, and so they were both in the same ballpark. Uh, Great Western Dining has also helped us in that because they work directly with uh, the vendors uh, and they were uh, on board with us uh, looking at different vendors and also moving to Coke uh, because they serve it. Coke does service a couple of the other schools that they have accounts with uh, and they are overall happy with their service and the product and uh, they said that we got a good deal for uh, what the contract was. They said? Great Western. OK. Yeah. And this is a five year? Yes. A five year. Yep. So Coke is paying $5,000 a year? Yes. And then they'll also give us a percentage of, or a dollar off of however much. Uh, yeah, it's on a terms, five year term. Are, are you, have you found this, Brian? This yep. the term? OK. Yep. Is there any more discussion? I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Okay. It's been moved and second to, oh, hold on just a minute, to, uh, please bear with me. Okay, it is recommended that the board approve the contract with Heartland Coca Cola effective immediately. Sorry for the delay, but thank you. Uh, uh, it's been moved and seconded. Julie, would you call for the vote? Hewitts? Yes. Hart? Yes. Holt? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Bartlesmeyer? Yes. Elliott? Yes. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> thank you, Tom. Uh, item B approval of the 2022 uh, 20, 23 academic calendar. Following are the 2022-23 academic, academic calendars for Bourbon County campuses and Crawford, Miami County campuses. It is recommended that the board approve both 2022-23 academic calendars for their respective locations. Um, Any changes? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I, yeah. Those all address a couple of things with that. Um, you'll notice on the calendars there's a discrepancy between the color coding and 
the dates, the color coding is correct. Uh, December 15th would be campus closed instead of December 16th. And January 5th would be campus reopen instead of January 4th. A major change would be going back to the two days before Thanksgiving break as being um, contract days. So we are <laughs> within the main campus and the other campus in the county, which would be Burke Street. We are going to try to revert to what we did in 2020, the fall of 2020, where students start and finish before Thanksgiving. <coughs> that way we do not lose the student population over Thanksgiving. We have a um, possibility of some remodeling that might may be done over between Thanksgiving and the start of the next semester as well. So that campus or this campus and Burke Street would stay on that calendar. Also any distance education, so online classes would stay that way as well. With Miami, Lynn and Crawford County, um, we ascertained feedback from all of the school districts that send us students. And there were quite a few that said, you know, there, there would have transportation issues by doing it that way. They would not know what to do with their high school students after Thanksgiving break. And so it would create some undue stress on those school districts. And so we decided to split the calendars into two different ones. So we've done this once before with um, all differing calendars. So it's, it's, um, it's definitely doable. How well did it work? How well? <clears throat> Satisfying. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a better answer at the end of this year. <clears throat> as far as success rates with students, non-statistically significant. Um, as far as financial savings, I, I'm sure there's some there. Mm. For, for students, instead of going home over right. Thanksgiving and then having to pay the return, uh, I think that's probably where the most benefit is to this. Any more discussion? Yeah, I remember that you <clears throat> created that with kind of a team of folks. Yes, um, our calendar committee, Rob, well, I might need help here, is three members appointed by Fscape and then three uh, staff or administrative members. Myself, Janet, and then John Hill, baseball coach John Hill, are the three staff members. Robert, Deborah Allen, who teaches psychology, and Sarah Sutton, who's ag are the three faculty members this year. Thank you. Any more discussion? I'll entertain a motion. So moved. <clears throat> Second. It's been moved and seconded. Julie, would you call for the vote, please? Hart? Yeah. Holt? Yes. Nelson? Yeah. Barbara Meyer? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Ewans? Yes. Moving on to administrative updates. I'm up first. Um, I don't have anything new to add. Um, I would say if you noticed in the separations, we had admissions department um, openings. And so we are taking applications and we'll be starting interviews for those two positions. Um, we have a lot of really great people on campus that are filling in and helping us hold that up. We will have a senior day on April the 1st. Again, with admissions going to have some open positions we've got other people that are going to step up and do that we still have students coming for campus visits and so advising the trio and and student services will be taking care of those students as they come in for those visits as well so there won't be any gaps um, scholarship applications are open and students can apply for scholarships <laughs> Brian has gone ahead and the students that have already applied is in the process of sending them out there. We received your application. You know, once we have all the final details, they'll get a scholarship agreement at the end of uh, early summer, late, late semester. So all of that will be taken care of. Um, Trio's got a lot of activities going on right now. They've got campus visits and workshops that they are busy seeing students. Of course, we're kind of anticipating our own getting ready to open in March. So we'll we'll start having students come in for that. Early alerts are, are always coming very rapidly in February because faculty is very good about submitting grades for us in February, March, and April. So that then advising can be reaching out to students who maybe have excessive absences or have grades um, that are 
maybe dropping below what they had seen previously, but anything that's below a C, they'll be contacting them and they'll text those students and have them come in and meet with them, get them to tutoring and, and hopefully help save their, their grades for the semester. Late start classes, some have already started, but we have some that will start at the beginning of March. So we're still enrolling students in those classes. Summer enrollment is open, so students can enroll in that as well. The registrar's office sent out the graduation processes. The petitions to graduate are coming in, and part of that is for students to come in and meet with advising and run their degree audits to make sure all of their, their course requirements have been met. And if they you know, need to take a summer class, we can get them enrolled in that so that they can still walk at graduation. Um, we currently have zero students that have notified me off campus of any kind of COVID restrictions. So we seem to be holding our own with that this semester and things are going smoothly. If anybody has any questions, I'm, I'm happy to, to answer them. Thank you, Jen. Okay, thank you. Adam. All right, quick update from me. A um, lot of focus right now in Lynn County on the new building, going up to it on Thursday morning to see the progress they've made. The high schools within Lynn County have 88 students pre enrolled to take classes there. That's great. So that's a good numbers. And you know, from everything that we're going to do at that campus is Excel and CT. So that's even, even better news. Um, some things going on, like Janet mentioned, enrollment is going to open the week before spring break. So we'll do a soft opening about 10 days before that, but um, enrollment will open that week of March 14th. That'll be summer or uh, fall and um, winter intercession will be open then. So we're getting those items ready to go. And I really don't have any other major updates at this point, so. Everything's under control. Well, I, <laughs> let's pretend that that's the case. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. What is Lynn County uh, anticipation is that next fall? August 15th. They're going to open on the same day we do. They will do a, uh, thanks, Jen, that gives me a, they will do a ribbon cutting, cutting on August 12th, which is a Friday. So they're planning a ribbon cutting on August 12th. And then they um, will start classes on August 15th. We also, and I'll update you on this later future event, um, we have a combined music concert with Allen County and the Osho County Community Colleges on April 28th. And that will be in Chinook this year. So. Thank you. Chinook at, do they have a theater? On yeah, campus? it's not on campus. It is, and I'm gonna need- auditorium. <laughs> Memorial Auditorium. Yeah, Memorial Auditorium. Okay. <clears throat> City building. At first in Lincoln. Yeah, I know what's that. Julie. Sure. Um, not a whole lot additional besides what I put in the report. So hopefully you've got that. Um, we do, and you know, maintenance is very busy this week between uh, the weight room and Garrison. Um, also this week we're Processing refunds. We pulled our first report to review, and it's about six hundred thousand and three hundred and thirty some students. I think so. We'll be sending out refunds by the end of this week to students and and uh, processing payments. So, not a whole lot of extra other than that. Do you have questions about anything in the in the report or comments? Here's that. Okay. Thank you. Tom. Uh, I athletics the winter seasons are uh, winding down. Basketball is in there for the last couple of weeks uh, as we go into the conference championships and whatnot. Uh, track and field just had their uh, conference championship for indoor season down in Pittsburgh this last weekend. Uh, in both the men and the women teams won the conference, and so they had a great showing down there. I uh, and that's the women's third straight conference title. I uh, and the men, this is the first one. So I'm uh, really proud of them. They're a good group of kids and went down there and competed. I uh, were they were able to bring back some trophies, so that's always nice. Uh, we have a lot going on in terms of uh, Julie mentioned the Hill Street building. Uh, that is just about done, I think. Uh, we've got the weight room equipment, like the actual 
heavy iron stuff showing up this week for installation. Uh, thanks to maintenance for working throughout the weekend uh, to get the rubber floor laid down. Uh, I went over there today and it looked really nice uh, and it's ready. So uh, outside out there, we've got uh, 10 work days, nine work days now for, until we're able to play on the baseball field. Uh, and so we're looking forward to that. We think it's gonna be great to get out there. Uh, the baseball team is currently down in Girard uh, playing because the outfield at La Roche Complex uh, was not playable and uh, our field obviously is not either. Uh, and Girard's got a full turf field. So it's a little preview of what we're looking forward to. Uh, no more rain outs and driving the team uh, outside of Fort Scott to play our home games. Uh, and so we're excited about that. I, other than that, I don't think I, with athletics where there's any updates. I, within the foundation office, we've been awarding all of the scholarships where I, we have all those awards out for students that are receiving endowment scholarships for this fall or this spring. I, our scholarships are open with, I, with the institutional <clears throat> ones that Janet spoke of I, for next fall. And the students that are coming next fall, the applications for housing will also open March 1st. So I think that's it. Can we do open house or anything on Hill Street? On Hill Street, we should probably do something like that. I uh, we got them some things that were back ordered a little bit. I uh, and so and then the turf company sent us wrong type of turf. Uh, and so they have to send us more of the right kind. And so the exact date of that is going to be kind of fluid for the next couple of weeks uh, until we get everything in there and knows it. Uh, COVID's still hitting some of those companies and whatnot, not kind of hard when they're trying to get equipment in from overseas and whatnot. It's still setting their timeline back a little bit. But uh, when we get a for sure date, we uh, will definitely do some sort of open house. Okay. Any questions for Tom? Okay. Thank you so much. The um, I noticed that it says spending enrollment data tables go here, but they really are in there, right? <laughs> They're just down below. Julie's like, I'm not know. calling you out, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought you were calling me out. I was. <laughs> <laughs> the um, just a couple of updates about some of the things that we've got going. Uh, Garrison apartment, of course, we purchased that with our HERC, which is the higher education enrollment uh, funds that we got uh, from the <coughs> federal government. And we've been waiting a while to make sure that we had all the state fire marshal approvals and the state fire marshal was down a week before last. We have some punch list things that we're doing there, but we should be able to move students in that facility. Hopefully by the 1st of March, we still have students living at the hospital, as you know. And those students will be kind of, it will be a little bit of a shuffle, but uh, Garrison will be an all female dorm. And so, like I said, it will open up some spaces and allow us to move those students there. So we're excited about that. And I wanna thank maintenance for doing such a great job of making sure that they're really on taking care of those punch list things that we had to make sure that we're in compliance, of course, with the state fire marshal. We also, the state fire marshal, while he was here, uh, gave us approval to move forward with our Bailey Hall renovation. The Bailey Hall renovation, the funds to do that are a combination of Mr. and Mrs. Bob Bailey, which we're incredibly appreciative of, as well, again, uh, HERF money that we've identified that we can use for that remodel. So it's really exciting to be able to upgrade that academic building, do some things that we help, that we hope are going to retain uh, students be able to give them more value uh, when they're here in terms of that educational process. And so we're very excited about those things. We also got Hill Street approval. Uh, once we get the weight, the weights in there, then the fire marshal will return to make sure that everything is good as far as the state fire marshal is concerned. Uh, a little bit about SPARC money, you, you'll see there in the report, we did submit to SPARC, which is state federal with state money that came from the federal government for COVID-19 relief. But there are three sort of basic, there's, there's three SPARC funds at the state level right now. The state has over a billion dollars in SPARC funds. One of them was due February 16th, and that's what we applied for. 
One of them, there's $100 million that at this time is only for universities, but we're hoping that legislation is going to take a look at that and maybe expand the expand who will have opportunity to use that money. And then there's a base spark fund that we have not applied for that does not have a time limit on that we probably will be applying for. So we applied for the one that was due February the 16th. We're hoping for simulators to put at the Lynn County and the Crawford County Tech Centers. And then those simulators, of course, could be moved around, but they're amazing training tools for the students. They would still get some hands-on and the simulators would be for heavy equipment operators. They would still have hands on in the actual machine. The way we would do that is a collaborative agreement with some of the construction companies where they would, we would use their equipment and then they get to use that donation that they would get to do what we kind of in-kind donation where they get to count the hours on that machine as a donation towards us. And so we're hopeful, I'll be honest, I don't know when we will hear about whether that has been awarded or not. It, it's a little bit soft right now at the state level in terms of where that money uh, is going and sort of how it is funded. There is a SPARC committee. I have spoken to a couple of those just to make sure that they know that we're in the running. I think that community colleges had about a, a $40 million ask altogether. Uh, and I think 30 of that is KCK that was asking for their downtown center. But uh, some, of, some of the rest of us were asking as well. So, Comparatively, the $800,000 is a relatively small application, and uh, we do have a match on it, so I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful we will have that one. You can see from the report that, as usual, our folks are very, very busy. The Gordon Parks, of course, is celebrating Black History Month this week, and we're very proud of all the things that they've done. They had an open mic yesterday, and uh, they have several other things planned as well. One of the things that I did want to point out is uh, some of the tables that I put in the packet. And it says there that they're provided by KBOR and KACCT. KBOR, of course, is the Kansas Board of Regents who coordinates us. You guys govern us. And KACCT is the Kansas Association of Community College Trustees. That group, the 19 community colleges, pay a subscription to. And we have an executive director that basically works to lobby on behalf of the 19 community colleges. And so these are just, if you take a look, the first one is just fall preliminary numbers, which just for Adam, uh, that's an artificial day. It, 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 it gives the worst all... data of any set that's out well, there. Well, except it's the most sought after data. That's true. Be that. I can tell you that if you look across for us, we the one year change, we're up 8.9%. I don't want you to get too hopeful about that though, because, um, you know, we should be up since last year, but we're down from 2019. Uh, so we're down certainly from post pandemic time. Pre. Pre, pre, sorry, thank you. <laughs> pre pandemic time. So, um, you know, I, we don't really know the answer to that. We continue to search and try to make sure that we're doing what we need to do to sustain. I can tell you that our vision is that the programs that we do well, we do very, very well. And uh, we're, we're working to that. Of course, enrollment growth is always important, but right now we're just more interested in sustaining and doing those things well that meet the community and student needs that we have. There's some other information in there. You can see new transfer students by credit hour. Uh, you can see that we do well. If you look, it has GPA. Now, what that means are transfer students that transfer to the six state institutions and uh, how many hours they complete once they get there and what their GPA is. And you can see that our faculty does a great job of educating and making sure that our students are ready to make that next move, to make that next step at the four-year level. Uh, total cost of tuition and fees uh, for in-district and out-of-state. If you take a look at that table, it's interesting. Uh, you can see this has listed the six universities. And it does, I don't think it has Washburn on. No, it does have Washburn on there, does it? Washburn's yes. unusual because they are a municipality. They're a municipal college or university and so they are not really Kansas Board of Regents they're not Board of Ed they're they're board all by themselves so they're coordinated like we are you can see there though uh Fort Scott Community College 
uh, right there, 1,530. So in terms of affordability, and we never want to say cheap, but affordability, we're incredibly affordable. And of all of those listed, uh, there's only two that would be considered more affordable than us, and they're they're within a uh, hundred dollars. So that that is always good to know. There's a lot of information in here. If you ever have questions about it, make sure that you let me know. The Kansas Board of Regents does put out a data book that anybody can access. If you go to the Kansas Board of Regents, it's got great information there about all of the coordinated colleges, which include us community colleges and the technical colleges as well as the universities and there's there's great information in there to be gleaned uh, it does take some time to dig that all out the um the last table that i have in there uh, this one was produced by kacct which is kansas association of community colleges and it's interesting uh, if you take a look, it shows you basically what the 1998 mill levy was and an average of 24.8 and what the 2020 mill levy, mill levy average is, which is 29.09, which basically we're right there. We're at 29 this year. We're at 29.32. So we're very comparable uh, in terms of mill levies. It talks about the, you can see the next column is either the increase or decrease in mill levies since that time. So over the 22 years, uh, the next column is our 2020 student headcount. You can see that community colleges vary greatly from a headcount at Johnson County Community College of 28,000 uh, yeah. to, uh, I think the smallest right now is independence mm -hmm. at 1,308 Fort Scott Community Colleges. We're at 2,608, which is down some from what we have seen previously. Like I said, up from last year, but that's not a very good measure because we should be up from last year. Um, it it, show, it show also shows you the amount collected in ad valorem taxes and the amount of dollars generated from one mill. Now, all of us wish we were Johnson County and got over $10 million per mill. <laughs> but uh, we don't have that. And I think that we do very well and have a huge economic impact with what we do receive and we're very appreciative of it from the county. We are the lowest in what we receive in ad valorem taxes at $84,322. But that just goes on valuation, of course, and that changes. That doesn't mean that uh, we can't do just as well. And I assure you that we do the rest of the community colleges. But when you look in there, it does allow you to see the vast difference between the community colleges, the resources, of course, and the funding streams that we have. So uh, I would be happy uh, to answer any questions that you have. Do you have any idea on this last graph the 1998 mill levy compared to the 2020 mill levy. You have a head count for 2020. Any idea head count of 1998? I do not. Okay. I can tell you that I look at that head count a lot. It only goes 10 years back. Yeah. We're, we're way down from the, you know, when we hit the recession in 08, 09, 2010. <laughs> My thinking is that we're way ahead of 1998. Wouldn't that be right, John? I don't, don't know. You? I could look that up for you. I think we probably are. I, I, I don't know. I can't answer that. Sorry. <clears throat> Actually, you know, it, it is interesting to look at the trends. Yeah. Um, of course, we tend to be inversely related to the economy. And so when, um, when the recession hit in 08, that definitely upped our enrollment. That's the highest enrollments we had had that I had seen in, in a long time. But we have declined since then. We had definitely leveled off up through 2019. We had kind of stopped the fall. But I tell you, once the pandemic hit, we took a drop. And we have not come back from that. Jim, would you restate your question to me? 
what was our head count in 98 was it bigger than it is today oh okay that's what your question was okay yeah i'm, I'm thinking it's not as much i'll definitely that, look that up and let you because know. we didn't have the programs in uh, 2000 in the 1998 that's uh 23 24 years ago i don't think we had the programs that we have now i don't so think I, we did either That, that's but something, you know, that something we could find yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I did want to, because that sort of <laughs> jumped something loose at the gym. We're also looking into CDL training. As you know, that was a historic program here that we just couldn't make work anymore because of the way it was. But CDL trainers are in great demand. And uh, the Department of Transportation at the 1st of February changed the rules about those getting a CDL license. And so actually it was, I had talked to this, to the five other community colleges in Southeast Kansas to see if we could submit a SPARC grant application for all of us, but it wasn't going to work out. Part of it was kind of the timing. It kind of came up quick in terms of that February the 16th, but we will meet uh, next week. And we're certainly trying to figure out how can we work with county, city, school districts who badly need bus drivers. That's another thing that we've looked into. And how can we do that and be able to meet the demand? You know, one of the problems is that the industry trains their own now. And uh, so the eight week program that we had, that it's not doable. Those eight week programs don't work, but there's gotta be something that works. And we definitely want to be able to provide those skilled workers uh, in, an, in an industry now that is so badly in need uh, that we hear about it all the time. And you probably, like me, every time you drive uh, through a county, the schools always have up signs, you know, bus drivers needed. And so we are working on that. I can tell you that we worked on it before and didn't come up with any good options, but with the new rules, I, I feel like we're going to be able to put something together and put the pressure here. Yeah, we were at a tremendous disadvantage. Yeah. The old, the old style programs. Yeah. The so things have level, changed and evolved. Yeah. So. The entry level driver training uh, legislation that went into effect in, on February 1st of this year has changed the way that you can train drivers, which will be more helpful to us. So for entry level drivers. One of the things that we struggle with, and actually I have a meeting with the Department of Commerce uh, <laughs> tomorrow is that if we try to do it by the credit hour, that comes with it really difficult, a very difficult thing to do because you have to meet so many minutes and it doesn't work out well. But if we can do it as non-credit training, so just BNI training, I think that we're going to be much better off one of the problems with truck driving too is it doesn't qualify for federal financial aid. So that's a problem. So students can't get federal financial aid for the program, then how are they gonna pay for it? If I can go get hired by the industry, drive, and then they take the money out of my check, you know, for my experience and my training, then obviously they're gonna do that as opposed to, you know, train for eight weeks. But, they're, but now with the new rules, they do have to have some hours training before they can just go set for the CDL. Because right now, or before the 1st of February, you could just go set for the CDL. Now you had to have a tractor trailer and it had to be able to pass the safety inspection, which was one of the most difficult things. But uh, so we're trying to overcome a lot of those hurdles that just kind of evolved within that CDL program. Anything else, any more questions? Discussion. Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Then moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. There's more paint back there, guys. <laughs>